this is uh, your burden going forward. So congratulations. Um, in 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 that uh, transition, though, um, I will point out there's there is a stipulation in the charter that um, the TFC will be um, will migrate towards in a a technical community TSC based on the project leadership um, in the after the first six months and so um, Chris will be the TSC chair for the first six months and then once we get the new TSC seated uh, we'll want to talk about um, a time frame for electing a new TSC chair to uh, keep things going so um, with that uh, congratulations Chris um, as Todd mentioned um, we uh, have a quorum so we can get started, Chris. Um, and the only agenda topic we had for today uh, from the last discussion was to discuss the proposal. I think there was also some discussion on the list that probably warrants a quick overview of some of the scope discussions that happened prior to the public announcement. Um, I think some were privy to those discussions and others were not, so it might catch people up. Um, and uh, just a public announcement, <laughs> we are working on the Slack and mailing list integration. Um, I would expect sometime you know, later this week or early next week we'll have that up and running, um, but uh, we are working on it. And um, I think that's all the announcements that I had up front. So Chris or Tomas, I'm not sure I, you both sort of chimed in on that proposal. Um, I'm not sure where you want to start or who wants to take the lead, but I'll turn over to you, Chris, since you're the chair now. Chris, are you there? Can anyone hear me? Uh, dual, dual mute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was uh, double muted. <laughs> only, uh, I only unmuted half of it. Um, okay. Yeah, so I'll have uh, Ben and, uh, and Tomas uh, uh, present the proposal, and then we can open it up for discussion amongst, the, uh, uh, amongst those on the call. So, okay. Ben, Tomas, you got it. Yeah, I, I, I can start first, uh, Chris. Uh, I hope uh, you guys can hear me. I can, anyway. All right, good. Uh, that's still enough confirmation. <laughs> so, uh, so as, as we know from the, the day that we had the face-to-face -face meeting, uh, prominently we have, uh, from, from the uh, contributors, we have two uh, models. Um, in uh, our code. Uh, so one, uh, of course, you all know uh, UTXO model uh, from, from Bitcoin base. And then, uh, you know, from, from IBM and probably others, uh, we have the things we call state transition model uh, in which we keep track of the states um, and the transaction would, would uh, mutate the state from, from one form to another. Uh, and an execution engine to manage the smart contract, uh, allowing the application to inject code uh, into the into the, the blockchain uh, to drive the uh, the smart contract and, and the logic that's, that's specific to the type of transactions that the application would want to do. So those are primarily uh, two two models uh, from the, the code base that, that we learned of from the, the very first face-to-face uh, -face meeting. Um, and so this proposal is a uh, collaboration among a number of, uh, of code contributors uh, trying to uh, trying to merge the, the two models together, uh, perhaps in some fashion, but at first an attempt to support both uh, and, and and see what happened. Um, as part of this proposal, is also get together for a, a week sprint, uh, and then maybe a few weeks after that. Um, to, to see how we can take this forward, and uh, you know maybe we need uh, adjustments and, and, and so on after that. But what this proposal is saying is that uh, at first to get started quickly, uh, we want to put out two code base uh, in the hyperledger uh, repo. Uh, one is one from DAH, uh, which is a, a UTXO implementation in Java. Uh, that also make use of Blockstream's uh, lib consensus. And the other code base is the IBM's OBC uh, Open Blockchain implementation uh, written in Go. Uh, so, and, and, and that represents the state transition model. So we want to put both models out there because certainly 
uh, from the members of this community, uh, some of us trying to play around with the concept and POC or, or play around with some scenario, trying to code up some application uh, to understand the, the, the concept and so on. So at least it gives us the place to start with. But we want to be quickly define what is the right code base for us. And that's the, the, the first sprint that we want together to work on this. It's very, very important. So that is the second point of this proposal is that trying to work toward that and using OBC as the base and incorporate the UTXO model into OBC as, as I presented the architecture during the face-to-face -face meeting. There's a, a number of uh, flexible points uh, in the OBC framework that we would be able to uh, to add additional models uh, quite quite simply. So so this is the the, the exercise of that. Uh, so from the proposal, then we if, if you go down to um, instead of instead of uh, reading the text, you go down to the bottom of the of this document. Um, there's a diagram, uh, so I can talk about this diagram. Uh, and this proposal is, is uh, primarily working between uh, th Thomas and, um, and, uh, and, and, and a number of developers from, from uh, OBC group. Um, so we uh, imagine that OBC is the base code for this. Um, and then we would be able to bring in the UTXO model as part of the transaction interface from the API point of view, so going from the right to left. From the right, right hand side is the business logic, which is the application uh, logic. And it can interface with uh, the API layer. The API layer support a portal buff that the application can interface with using uh, gRPC. Um, or of course, you know, REST is still available uh, using REST. Uh, or we might be able to provide an, an SDK for specific languages, uh, for example, Go or, or Node.js or, or, or Java, uh, may have an SDK that can be embedded in the application, and that SDK will take care of the communication with the, OP, with the API and the infrastructure so that the application would not have to, to, to deal with REST or with, with GRPC. Right, so that's the hey, interface <coughs> layer to the to the business logic. Hey, hey, um, hey, <coughs> hey! I'm sorry. This is Morali from DDCC. Are you sharing a presentation? Um, is um, there something being? Sorry, I, I, no, no, I, I did not share I, because I thought everybody has to the doc, but I can share. Uh, let's see. Okay. How do I do share? And where is the doc? Is the doc? Uh, uh, Chris sent the doc out uh, a couple the, of days ago. Yeah. The, the doc is on the mailing list, and Tomas actually just sent it. Okay, I, I hope that at least you can see my screen now. You can. And if you're not speaking, if you can go on right, mute, right. Hey, look, the lines up. Okay, so so let let me uh, let me go on then. Um, so so that's the the right hand where the application interface with the uh, the API. Uh, then continue from the API. Uh, so the, if, if the API is UTXO, um, it's the the same transaction uh, structure uh, that the API that the application sends in the application the API will forward the uh, transaction to uh, the 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 in, in OBC we call it peer, uh, which is a a, a layer uh, that uh, uh, does a few security checking like uh, uh, if if there's if if uh, security is enabled it would do uh, signature verification on on that transaction to make sure that that it comes from a, a known member uh, so on and so forth so there's a few checking going on before the transaction is sent to the consensus manager. All right. And then from the consensus manager, then 
it will first of all it will hand it over to the plugin. Uh, in in our case, we have a number of implementations uh, mainly around uh, Byzantine fault tolerance. So uh, it will hand over to um, uh, to to the plugin, and the plugin uh, will perform the consensus based on uh, based on the, the the algorithm that is implemented, right? The output of that is a a block of transactions uh, in order uh, to be executed by the environment, uh, wh whatever that means, right? In the case of UTXO, uh, that means that the the validated nodes would would validate uh, the transaction correctness, uh, meaning that it will execute the scripts uh, both. Uh, the uh, unlocking and the locking uh, scripts on the uh, inputs and the uh, the uh, on, on the inputs of the transactions and also uh, validate the output uh, on on the transaction right and then deposit that into uh, the ledger now how how does it do that uh, so as we know from uh, from the the execution model in OBC, uh, there is a uh, there is a thing we call chain code, and chain code uh, is a clickable framework that allows us to instantiate uh, any kind of uh, virtual environment. And we are today we, we have one implementation for Docker container. Uh, so if there is a, a a request to to execute a transaction, meaning to validate a transaction, um, then it will check to see if uh, there's a chain code for that available. The, the, the chain code container for that available, and if so, then it just pass the transaction over and say, you know, do whatever you need to do, and what you what you want to return is is whether it, it's successful or not, right? So in this case, then what what we're thinking about doing here is this. Um, there's, there's a couple of approaches here. Uh, I'm going to describe one of them, and then uh, you know during the sprint uh, we can go into details into other approaches. But the one that I'm thinking of is perhaps uh, one of the sim sim uh, simpler one is that for the for the chain code container, uh, currently it is, as I said, it's Docker container. There's a, a, a layer that we call chain code shim on the container. And that chain code shim interface with whatever the language that we built uh, the chain code in. Today we support uh, Go. Uh, but we have internally, we also have uh, Java and, and Node.js support. So uh, we can we can enhance that to plug in the DSL interpreter from C++, right? We can plug that in, and that layer is responsible for in, for executing the scripts coming from the transaction, uh, and namely the the locking and, and unlocking scripts, right? And it will it will validate that, and it will return the appropriate status, whether true or false, success or failure. And at that point, we de we will we can decide whether to append uh, the transaction to the log or not, uh, to to the ledger or not. And that's it. We can continue on. The other type of transaction, the 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 uh, the normal OBC transaction, flows through exactly the same concept, but instead of going to the DSL interpreter. It will go to a chain code, and it will be executed the same way return code, and would do the exactly the same thing. So that's very much the the overall concept. Uh, I'm going to pause here to see um, Thomas. Uh, anything else that you would like to to add? Hi, Green Wow, that's a very bad feedback. Um, uh, Thomas, uh, everyone, please go on mute. Uh, Thomas, uh, uh, if you can, uh, you can uh, try yeah. that again. Green, please. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, great. I'm sorry, I had a wrong setup here with uh, with my mic. 
Um, thank you very much for this. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, we have a fire alarm. So thank you very much for this uh, in introduction into the technical details. Uh, I, I, I'd like to have the, uh, take the opportunity to step a bit back and uh, talk about the motivation of why why we made this, this proposal and how we see this, these two stacks. Um, first, of, uh, first of all, um, they have, uh, th these two uh, um, candidates have uh, quite different uh, origins. Um, our candidate is originated in uh, the experience uh, with the Bitcoin network, uh, which initiated uh, the whole discussion about this technology. Um, and uh, uh, your candidate is basically a rethink with a with the benefit of a insight of how this network eventually unlocks for the possibilities. Um, and uh, you you created something that is a very flexible framework, a fabric that is uh, um, friendly to technology explorations and to research. Um, whereas uh, our framework uh, was uh, try, tested and tried to uh, develop uh, or de deploy applications uh, in the financial services domain. Uh, it is a limited domain, nevertheless it is a, a tested um, and working framework with a limited set of functionality. Why we, why we were working uh, with this technology, we actually learned that the flexibility of that technology is sufficient for most of our use cases. I would say nearly all of our use cases. Um, and uh, we, we also uh, examined uh, the, uh, the technologies that are known under the, the buzzword smart contracts and as you call it chain code. We think they are very interesting concepts and we would also like to explore them with uh, as framework that is able to support them. Um, nevertheless, if we think on all use cases uh, in the financial services sector, we think that a network with the capabilities that are already offered by the Bitcoin network or by Bitcoin-like network are sufficient. Uh, actually, the introduction of smart contracts uh, and similar raises uh, a few new concerns uh, at, uh, increases the attack free attack uh, surface for, for such a stack. Excuse me. Um, therefore, um, we we would like to cautiously enter this space and sub therefore submitted or uh, a candidate for a consideration of an implementation that is. Uh, more uh, building on that simpler but, but uh, just tested uh, um, technology set. I also would like to clarify a bit the, the, um, the buzzwords we were using in this uh, discussion, such as the UTXO, or um, it, is, it is sometimes uh, used uh, to describe the entire alternate implementation that we, we, we submitted that would be coming short of the recognition of uh, that it is also uh, it, that, that, uh, that, that it also submits an API which is very important for our business users. Uh, the UTXO is nothing else than a forced ordering of transactions which we think is useful. It is a very powerful method of uh, achieving scale and we, we are, we, we are we, the, the reason we suggested that this needs to be implemented in some kind of common stack because we think we are afraid that without that concept the scalability of the system would be endangered. We also submit, uh, we also uh, requested an implementation of uh, of a, a limited script interpreter, a Bitcoin-like script interpreter as a chain code into this new stack because uh, such a small language um, reduces the attack surface and we have the unique chance of using um, a, a, a time-tested cryptographic implement, a time impl implementation of those cryptographic primitives that we can basically inherit from 
the Bitcoin project or Blockstream's uh, technology, which was also support, uh, uh, submitted as a candidate. So these are these are actually our motivations to get the best of uh, uh, a forward-looking architecture and uh, uh, a time and business-tested frame, uh, um, framework. Um, I, I think I, I hope that this uh, introduction to the to the proposal gives you a bit more context. And thank you very much again for the in detail discussion by Ben. Thank you, uh, Thomas. Um, at this point, I think we, we just open up for the community. Any questions, comments, um, recommendation, yep. advice at this point? And uh, this is this is Chris. Um, I've uh, also just copied the document into a Google Doc. I should have done that. I didn't realize that the um, the archive strips off attachments. So anybody who was looking in the archives, I apologize. Uh, I didn't notice that before. And um, uh, so now we have a link to the doc. Uh, it can be commented, and um, I think you know if, if people want to have um, access to be able to suggest edits and so forth, um, please do so in comments, and that way we can. Um, and we, we may add some additional letters, but we'll have to sort of at least start with this. Uh, so that that should just have hit the list uh, a couple of minutes ago. So any um, anyone on the on the call would like to. Ask questions. Yeah, hi, it's Tomash. Hi, guys, it's Richard Brown, R3 here. So, first of all, thank you for pulling this together and, and taking us through it. Um, I must first apologize, I've not read the document in detail yet, so it may be that you answer it in it, in which case, just tell me to read the manual. Um, but my question really is, is one I've raised a couple of times now, but I still don't really have clarity on, and it's what's the the, the argument or the compelling argument for why we should be trying to bring these two code bases together. I mean, it's, I mean, in, in my perhaps simplistic mind, it, it, it's clear that, they, that they're designed to solve, I think, different problems and, and optimized for different scenarios. And it's entirely likely that both, both architectures are appropriate for, for the use cases they target. And I'm struggling to come up with an argument for why they need to be brought together. It strikes me that you know, one argument might be if there were a use case that required both types of logic in the same platform or consensus between them. But it's not obvious to me that anybody has identified such a use case. And maybe you have in which case, great. But um, but I guess what I'm trying to ask is, you know, just because we can unify two different code bases doesn't mean that we should. So I'm just wondering, you know, is there a successive explanation for, for, for why we, we think we should do this? Uh, if, uh, we can try to respond. This is uh, Shaul from, from Digital Asset. Um, what we think is that the code bases are very complementary, where uh, OBC gives a, a, uh, a very flexible framework with a nice composable architecture. Um, so that's that's the first part where it really allows you to test out, uh, for instance, if you look at the comments, uh, there were great comments by Intel about choice of consensus mechanism. And uh, diving into the OBC code, we think that you can really disconnect, uh, at the extreme, you can disconnect uh, the consensus mechanism and put a, let's say, a, a proof of work like mining uh, consensus mechanism under it. So you can really experiment with the framework and try out uh, different, uh, uh, different ways. And, and you can see that with the chain code expressiveness. Uh, like if you want to plug in the uh, transaction serialization uh, of a different of, of a specific use case, you can do that. Uh, on the other hand, there's uh, what we're suggesting with merging the code uh, bases is, is really just getting a first instantiation of a, of a network up. Uh, so it's by no means the last instantiation or the only instantiation. Uh, but we're trying to to, to uh, kind of merge a balance between. Uh, between allowing this to be a project that has the the, the uh, outlook of, of developing a, uh, a bright future that's very different from from how it is right now, but also uh, just get hitting the ground running and, and finding an initial uh, proposal that will allow this code to be usable uh, in in the near future and that uh, that gives a sense of ownership to to uh, uh, to all four of the of, uh, of the initial code uh, proposals. So again, it's 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 just more around 
let's get something in place that we feel good with that we can start working from. Uh, but by no means is this the the end goal. And the merge is uh, it's not just a uh, you know forced uh, uh, a forced merge to to create something. It's it's really to be able to start the discussion from somewhere through coding and, and pull requests. Um, so that that was the rationale behind that. Okay, thank you. Hi, Chris. This is uh, Kelly Olson. I was wondering um, how the system deals. Kelly, with you're you're extremely faint. Do you want to ask? Are you on a speakerphone, or can you hear me better? Uh, that's that's somewhat better. It's still a bit faint. Uh, yeah, I was asking. I'm sorry if my headset's dying. Uh, if how mal uh, malicious Docker images are dealt with? Um, that's an interesting question because I am right now still at the uh, the IBM Interconnect uh, conference in Las Vegas. Yesterday, we spent about an hour talking with Docker uh, folks at the, uh, at the uh, expo here. Um, and they told us the, the current version of Docker has uh, the capability for us to really shut down uh, all activities from the container uh, to the host system. Uh, so the default allows additional I.O. and things like that, but from the configuration, we can tune that up uh, to really shut the door. Uh, so uh, they, they told us that there wouldn't be any problem in sandboxing the, any piece of code to run in a container, and uh, they're willing to, uh, to come and, and help us out. And uh, the, the, the gentleman that we talked uh, with uh, are actually in the same town as uh, as as I am, so in in North in in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, so that's that's the uh, the uh, the very positive uh, answer from from them. Uh, certainly, we have to do our own uh, investigation as well, uh, but but that gives us a, a very good confidence uh, on uh, where the technology is at this point. Okay. Yeah, I think that's um, that's something that remains of concern to us uh, because there have been privilege ex escalations and arbitrary code executions that uh, have been able to be enacted over the past year, and so it seems like that could compromise the the Byzantine fault tolerance of the system if a malicious docker goes out to the entire network. Right. Hi there. Uh, this is Igor Lilich uh, from Consensus. I just wanted to offer a, qu a quick comment. Um, earlier, there was a, a, a suggestion that most use cases can be covered by a UTXO-based um, architecture. Uh, I just I just wanted to check that a little bit because the the concept of smart contracts as a buzzword um, doesn't jive with a lot a lot of the our clients. I think there's a huge um, interest from industry in smart contracts and, and how they can op operate. So I just I just wanted to throw that out there um, to, the, to the group uh, because we, we, we view smart contracts as, as a very integral part uh, to these discussions. Well, I, 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 uh, I would not want to dismiss the notion um, and I, I am also aware that there are um, use cases which are excellent readdressed by smart contracts and I'm also enthusiastic about uh, its future users. Um, it's, uh, it's our effect that so uh, we can live without them and we can get quite far without them and it is also true that um, smart contracts in general, especially implemented in a generic Turing complete language in a Docker container and so on in their full flexibility as it is suggested raise very serious concerns of uh, security stability of the network. I don't I don't want to imply that this would not be we would not be able to solve that, but I I think that this is an area of research that we are we are glad to explore with this framework, but it's an area which we cannot currently view as a production environment and uh, that since digital asset talking for us all, for all, all users is aiming to deploy production systems in financial services companies using this technology 
we currently do not see it as a viable choice um, in comparison with uh, a limited um, execution language uh, that where the properties are well tested and the primitives are already time tested. Uh, hi, this is uh, David Vol from JP Morgan. Um, yeah, I just want to like to just comment that you know we too also recognize the, the the strength and power of smart contracts. We like the security guarantees that one can uh, tell the uh, the users of the applications that uh, a, such a system can present. But um, you know we're also you know to, to Thomas's point, uh, you know we we, we believe that it's, it's really important to get something going this year that we can demonstrate. You know, there was a lot of research done in 2015 and, and we're, we're looking at 2016 to be the year that we, we get something into production. <laughs> and uh, to the extent that, um, you know, we have sort of a potential short-term strategy that can get us there, build our applications. And, and you know, by the way, the, you know, the, the infrastructure that we're talking about here, it's all, it's all to, to support the, the building of applications. And and uh, and the applications, you know, if they have specific requirements around privacy and uh, and 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 whatnot, you know, that's it, to get something going uh, sooner uh, and up and running. That that gives us, you know, some of the benefits of uh, of a block a blockchain type of solution. Perhaps not the full range of potential that a smart contract space. Now that's still a good place to start. And um, but we we would like to get to that uh, later architecture. So this the proposal as outlined. You know I see see a lot of benefit in this. Um, we could get something up and going now, and as long as we understand the migration path to a more smart contract based architecture longer term, once we be able to prove out all of the 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 the, the points on on that um, makes a lot of sense. But uh, so I'm just. I'm curious, you know, uh, if uh, you know IBM and, and DH have, have and uh, uh, Blockstream, have you have you discussed a, a time frame where you think that second phase, that conversion, is? Are we talking 2016, or do we think that's going to be into 2017 or 2018? And what kind of framework are, are we thinking about uh, in that migration uh, to the to the final state? Uh, we, we want to organize a hackathon to to speed up uh, that convergence, uh, but we uh, we would not want to s define the convergence by a time point, but uh, by by the point where we are confident uh, of being able to deploy the resulting stack in a production environment, um, supporting the features that we currently still have and the non-functional properties that our, our current stack has, or being probably better than our current one. Right, and and I want to to uh, clarify something here, and, and and this diagram here might um, might give it a a uh, different interpretation. Um, the the base of the OPC code is there, and and that base is there to support smart contract. Um, you know, people still can write smart contract in chain code using GoLang uh, and and soon Java and and Node.js, right? And and the smart contract would be sandboxed uh, in a Docker container or any other virtual adjacent technology that the community would want to plug in uh, because of concern of uh, of uh, of Docker container security and so on, but. But I, I don't think that that, that would be a, a, a concern going forward, given the, the discussion that we had with uh, the Docker folks yesterday. Um, but 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 again, you know, things that, that we, we need to investigate to uh, for, for for our own confidence in in this. So the smart contract is there, UTXO model is there, um, so that to support a variety of different um, scenarios, uh, certain scenarios. The UTXO fits quite well, um, and and it it becomes uh, very easy. Certainly, you know, one can do a chain code to do exactly like what UTXO wants to do, but certainly not the same 
uh, restriction uh, from uh, the op the set of uh, the set of opcodes that have been uh, proven and, and tested in the last uh, six years from from Bitcoin network. Um, so that's that's why you know we want to plug in that uh, DSL interpreter is to be able to leverage that set of proven uh, opcodes that that's already uh, been running. Um, but but perhaps we could uh, enhance this diagram a little bit to to um, to show that the existing chain code and smart contracts still there. Um, I have a question on the selection of the DAH code base. Um, if the goal is to merge the sort of security uh, and battle testedness of of Bitcoin in the UTXO model, why was the choice made to go with the the DAH software over the Blockstream, uh, which is actually the core code base for for Bitcoin? Well, uh, the choice was not uh, uh, as you describe. Uh, we actually have um, an integration with the Blockstream code. Uh, we choose to submit a version of our code which is uh, not using it because Blockstream submitted their own project and we would like to, although we have an integration in-house which is a bit of a deviation out of uh, Blockstream code, uh, we would like to achieve the convergence within this foundation between these two, between these code bases. Um, we think that um, the, the, the cryptographic primitives, the, the DSL that we were speaking about uh, from the Bitcoin network give a strong foundation, but similarly, um, or higher level API layer written in Java is a much better foundation for business applications than you can find in the very original Bitcoin infrastructure where you basically have just RPC calls in a very unstructured and, and homegrown manner. So we think that, uh, uh, that the combination of our enterprise friendly infrastructure, enterprise friendly architecture for application programs and an integration of the, with the, with, with the Bitcoin uh, originated blockstream code uh, is, is the right way to go forward. We think that integrating this with IBM's very flexible framework is, is enables lots of new use cases and it could actually be a, a template for similar implement similar integrations. I don't think that is, that the suggestion that we made is is by no way the only suggestion to integrate into that framework. We could the same way we we elaborate the, the possibility of integrating uh, Blockstream's DSL interpreter, we could the same way elaborate integrating, let's say, Ripple's uh, transaction processor. Um, I, I, I hope that this, uh, this, this uh, uh, Hyperledger Foundation um, proves to be a, a very, very healthy lab for, for these attempts and made uh, the best integration in, in, uh, in, the, in the sense of uh, our commercial success win attempt. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the, the one other question I had was, um, I looked through the documents but wasn't able to understand it very well, but um, was around privacy and how those need to move into an off-chain transaction. Uh, is there, could you maybe talk a little bit more about how that works? Uh, yes, from the privacy, um, the the model that we have in OPC is, is quite similar to uh, what we use on Bitcoin. But uh, the the generation uh, of the private um, of of the of the key of the public key to be used in the transaction um, is, is different. Um, so we, we we describe in in the, in the white paper as well as the um, protocol spec. Um, if, if you looked at the um, the OPC doc that linked from the hyperledger uh, readme, uh, you will find 
you will find the doc right there. If you look on the screen sharing, you will find the OPC docs. Um, and in there, there are documents that that describe that um, privacy, uh, how how privacy is managed in uh, OPC. Um, so uh, briefly, I, I can I can explain a little bit here, but um, I want to point out the document. Uh, the documents are here uh, that that folks can uh, can can read. So um, so basically, uh, since this is a uh, permissioned network. Um, every every members of the network. Uh, by members, I mean uh, including the clients, uh, whether it's an application, a device, um, a users, um, and nodes on the network uh, would have to have a a, a membership uh, registration uh, with the entity we call. Uh, membership services, and what happened is that it will it will generate uh, a, a a certificate we call enrollment certificate. So each entity would have an enrollment certificate, and imagine that a client would have an enrollment certificate, and from the enrollment certificate, then the client can request for what we call a transaction certificate. Uh, the transaction certificate is what being used uh, to transact on the network um, and and uh, recommended to use a, a, a transaction certificate for each transaction um, that happening on the network right and the transaction certificate is generated in such a way that it contains um, various information uh, in that certificate to allow us uh, with proper authority for example, uh, auditor or regulator, uh, with collaboration from the member, to be able to audit the records, meaning the transactions, but not other members on the network. Right? They would not have a ability to link. Uh, this is this is what we call linkability. To be able to link these transaction certificates to an individual, uh, so that ability is kind of like taken away from. From folks on the network, but only available to certain authority. Um, so that that's how we we support uh, privacy. So transaction on the network is completely anonymous. Um, that no one uh, would be able to trace back to the individual, except uh, the the counterparties in the transaction, and of course regulators and auditors. Hey, this is Mick. Um, uh, at some point, Ben, I'd like to go into a deep dive on the membership service um, and the architecture for that, what the expectations were on that. Um, but I think that's that would be for another call. Um, the the question that I had for you on this one is similar to what Richard was asking earlier, um, which is, um, you know, all the documents that I've read on on OBC, the the current consensus mechanisms are uh, PBFT, which is you know, as you mentioned earlier, it's kind of state transition. Um, but UTXO is really log um, and consensus around the logs. Um, what you're thinking about the kind of mismatch in semantics between the two, is, is, it, is this something you see as being a, a concern or are we just really defining the state transition as, you know, extending the log? Um. So we uh, we look at consensus uh, a little bit different in in OBC is that uh, to us the consensus is like especially our specific implementation of uh, BFT um, is that it's like a a transaction ordering uh, a timekeeper if you will uh, so this is a uh, you know one could treat that treat that as a black box. And you know you would send transactions to it, and the output of that is that it would give you an, a, a list of order transactions to to execute or to to validate. Uh, so that that's very much it. Depending on you know it it doesn't matter what is happening in there. The output of that is a list of transactions for us to validate in in order. So because of that, because of it's that, kind of like. Uh, I heard an echo. 
Right, it's better now. Uh, so, so because of that, uh, it, it 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 seemed to me that it is applicable to whether it's a UTXO uh, transaction or a, a state-based transaction model. Um, because at the end of the day, what we want is that uh, there's a consensus of the network to tell us that these are the transactions to to validate in that order, and 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 that's good for whether it's UTXO or, or not UTXO. Well, we, we, we think that the UTXO, we, we think first of all UTXO is being unreferenced transaction, so uh, in avoidance of doubt we are not, not thinking in the context of a cryptocurrency, it's not about unspent, it's about unreferenced, but in principle uh, the transactions formed by the UTXO uh, a graph uh, which orders them uh, by their content and the existence, we think that the existence of the transac transaction in the ledger is the, state's, uh, the state change itself. The ledger basically progresses by transactions being included and they can only be included in the order which is implied by their references between each other. Uh, we think that uh, the consensus mechanism is uh, working on a higher level than on the individual order implied by this, but it's it's basically in on batches, the similar matter than it would work. It, it works in Bitcoin. Uh, it is basically ordering blocks which may or may which, which contain eventually unrelated or or related transactions ordered by this UTXO set. Okay, thanks. I I, I guess it's just looking at the consensus mechanism in, in OBC, I would have thought the Ripple model or something like that would be a more uh, obvious uh, fit for the kind of state transition approach. So um, this is this is Chris and. Um, this is Chris. So let me just take my chair hat off just for a moment, and um, you know, weigh in on <clears throat> what we were thinking as we, as we, you know, collaborated on on this proposal. You know, as Shaw suggested, um, you know, the idea is we just need to get things moving, in, um, and and provide us with um, a framework that we can, you know, that we can evolve as appropriate and as the community. Um, chooses through, you know, the, the discussions on the technical mailing list, through contributions and proposals and so forth. Um, this isn't intended to necessarily reflect that this is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. This was intended just to get us to a point where we could start bringing together some of the pieces that had been proposed. Uh, you know, we're not saying, you know, that this is exclusive of other potential contributions. In fact, we welcome them. It's just it was something that we that we could pull together that we we thought would give us a, a foundation on which we could build going forward and evolve as uh, as the community sees best fit. Hi, hi, Chris. This is uh, Dave Wall again, JP Morgan. Um, yeah, and and that that's very important for us um, as well because. We have we have some technology that we would potentially like to propose, and I'm hoping we might actually be able to, to talk about it tomorrow, or I mean next week. Um, uh, but you know, again, you know, we like the the idea of this flexible framework where we could test out different consensus models um, and uh, test out different you know ways of executing smart contracts, possibly even. You know, there there are some concerns around Docker containers. You know, a virtual machine still may may answer some of those issues. It is you know, there's a there's a spectrum of uh, pros and cons on, on these. Uh, but but the framework and uh, gives us some flexibility to do that. And um, and as you state through you know proposals and contributions, we could we could evolve this um, and and take. The, the one thing I think by choosing OBC framework, uh, it does suggest that we would be doing most of our development in Golang, which 
personally we're 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 okay with um but I think that's really the only thing that's kind of not not really totally locking locking us in but it, it's giving us a strong you know point in the direction that the strategic you know development environment is going to be in go and again I think we're okay with that um and uh uh, but again, yeah, I just I like what you're how you describe that, you know, a framework. It can evolve, um, and uh, and through the contributions. Um, the the other thing I, I just noted, you know, in this proposal, you, you do mention that you're looking for an available suitable venue in New York City. Uh, we'd be happy to to host something, you know, depending on what when it is. We've got several buildings here in New York City that that could potentially host that so I just want to put that out there as well thank you thank you yeah so putting my chair hat back on I will just sort of reinforce that and say that I would fully expect and um, uh, you know make just to make everybody you know crystal clear on this I, I fully would expect that anybody is willing to put forward any proposal um, and you know bring it up and we can discuss it and I would I would certainly hope you know that um, uh, you know that this thing does evolve, and that it isn't necessarily you know just a point in time thing. Um, I think we we all have we're all coming from a lot of different perspectives. Um, you know, a lot of us have different use cases in mind, and, and so we're going to have to figure out you know how do these you know how does this framework address our particular use cases and so forth. And if it's if it's not, then I think you know the the right the right the right approach is to is to make a proposal that would help you know steer it in the direction that that does allow you to satisfy your your use cases and so forth. Any other um <clears throat> any other Yeah, so I think comments? that's that's maybe a good uh segue or, or uh building on the the notion that in order for us to evaluate whether or not this is the uh the right flexible architecture or whether or not the architecture is suitably flexible for the diversity of interest of the group it's probably necessary to spend at least a little bit of time specifying what those requirements are and requirements might be a little bit too specific of a term but i think in the absence of kind of governing criteria about what uh what the intentions are then it becomes somewhat arbitrary about which decisions we make so you know some higher level choices involve you know whether this is uh, fully permissioned and in the case that it is permissioned is a centralized permission model and and so forth some of these kind of higher level things and I think if if uh, if our organization here can spend maybe the the first sprint as you put it rather than diving into a consolidation of code bases, but instead spend just at least a little bit more time being specific about what it is that Hyperledger provides that um, isn't already addressed in the broader community. I think that would be uh, ultimately much more efficient and much more successful of a process. Help me understand what you meant by that last. I'm sorry, what was that? Your your last sentence, I, I didn't really quite parse it. You're saying to help you understand what Hyperledger provides that the rest of the industry or the rest of the sort of blockchain community doesn't. I, I I don't think I quite understand what you meant by that. Sure, as as a community offering, what is it that uh, our program here is targeting that isn't maybe already satisfied by one of the uh, one of the existing projects like Blockstream, for example. Fair enough. So one of the, I, I think that's, I think that's a very good point. Um, and one of the, you know, one of the things that I have been thinking about is that, and, and I, I chatted with with Michael a little bit about this um, in uh, in Slack, um, is that it, I think it would be worthwhile if we as a community were to be able to pull together um, a white paper that did pretty much I think what you just described. You know, IBM um, took a crack at that with our own white paper in the OBC. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily be presumptuous enough to say, and again, I'm, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll have my chair hat on here. Um, uh, I, as an IBMer, I don't think I would want to necessarily say that that's where we should start. But maybe, um, you know, we could think about um, collaboratively 
um, working towards you know harvesting either some thoughts from the, the IBM white paper, I'm sure others, uh, digital assets, R3, um, JP Morgan, Intel, others may probably also have either internal white papers or things that they published and and we could maybe start collaborating on that. Um, uh, so it, you know, maybe a, maybe a, a sub project or a side, uh, a, you know, a parallel project would be to actually start to to to, to, to formulate that um, uh, collaboratively um, as as a as a community. Um, I'll, I'll be interested in seeing if anybody's interested in sort of serving as the editor and 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 sort of lead for that initiative. Don't all jump up. <laughs> well, first of all, let me ask this: Does that make sense to people to, to to start a project where we actually would start to pull together, you know, the sort of high-level use cases and requirements, and and map out a, a paper that describes essentially what we're trying to achieve? I think I think because that I think that will help us build consensus in the group. Um, Stefan here from Deutsche Börse. I'm not sure if you understand me, but could we also include in that paper transition path from the starting point to that end point a logical transition path that we know what to do and where to go? Yeah, I'll just comment. I do think uh, it makes sense. Um, I'm not, not ready to volunteer to edit it, but uh, certainly happy to contribute. Any other thoughts? Yeah, it's Richard here, R3. Um, so I, I can't um, volunteer to lead this, but I do think it's important that it's done. And my expectation is what it will yield is um, the process of preparing the paper will, will force choices. Um, so by um, either, it, either it will be far too broad and, and therefore or um, unhelpful, or it will have to make choices about you know, what kind of threat model this system is designed to engineer against, how many users or what types of users are anticipated to be part of it, what types of agreements or contracts are represented, whatever it is. Um, driving some agreement, which will not be easy at all, but needs to be done, driving some agreement on what those names are, what the scope is. I suspect what will have two, two impacts. One is um, it will define you know, through um, define quite obviously what the platform is not for, which then leads to the, the, the discussion of, okay, there's, there's likely to be a plurality of platforms um, aiming at different, um, different use cases. Mm -hmm. um, and it will then also um, clearly then lead to far easier decision making on some technical decisions. So I think it's, um, it, it's very important. Thanks, Richard. So maybe maybe let's put it this way, since it doesn't seem like everybody's. I think I think everybody's sort of looking at it and saying, "Oh my God, I have a day job. <laughs> Taking on a role of editor might be a bit much." Um, why don't we do this? Why don't we? Um, uh, we just sort of ask for people who are interested in participating in producing this sort of requirement slash you know white paper. Um, uh, for you know to, to, to sort of help us shape exactly what it is that we think we're building Yeah, hi, this is David Paul. I, I would definitely uh, Sign up for that exercise Thanks David anyone else Yeah, hi Stefan I would sign up too Stefan, thank you This is Igor Lilich from the Consensus. I can, I can also volunteer sometime. I apologize. There was a crackle. Uh, who is that? Uh, this is Igor Lilich from Consensus. Oh, okay. I can volunteer sometime. Okay, so I see also on the, in the chat, I see Richard, uh, Kelly, and Tomas are also interested. Um, and again, I mean, I, this isn't uh, an exclusive list. It's an inclusive list. Obviously, you know, if others want to, I think that's a that's a good start. And maybe you know, from amongst those, uh, um, you know, somebody will emerge and, and be willing to sort of take the pen, if you will, and, and help to herd the cats um, around that particular effort. <laughs> it looks like everybody now wants to contribute. Okay, well, this is great. All right, so we'll, uh, let, let's do that. I'll. Uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the. I'll, I'll, I'll create a uh, a Google Doc, and um, 
and, and link it through the wiki uh, for those. I, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but I actually I created a wiki, um, you know, that we can use as a project to collaborate. Um, I'm hoping to both, you know, record the minutes of all of the TSC meetings, links to project proposals, um, and and various other collateral that isn't necessarily purely code, um, uh, so that we all have uh, something that we can. Uh, that we can flesh out, and again, it's a wiki, so anybody can go in and edit and um, and, uh, and contribute as they see fit. Okay, um, so so back to the the, the proposal. Um, so let me just see if I can't just sort of get a sense for you know whether people are are comfortable yet, or they they still want to sort of think about this. Um, you know, again, just as as chair, I'd I'd really like to see. Um, this project sort of, you know, get moving and, uh, you know, get beyond just, uh, you know, just the sort of the requirements gathering phase. I, I do think that there's work that we can do to start setting things up without necessarily getting completely locked and loaded. Um, you know, there's a, there's a bit of work that's going to have to get done to, you know, build out a CI pipeline and so forth. And that obviously, you know, will have um, certain dependencies on, you know, which language or languages we're using um, and so forth, um, uh, certainly at least from a test perspective and, 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 and whatnot. But, you know, we, we have, you know, lots of things that we need to get rolling on. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, the best way to sort of kick off something is to pull everybody together and, uh, you know, start both, you know, socializing and getting to know one another, and, um, uh, but also to sort of uh, you know, if we can get face to face in particular um, on an initial sprint, um, I think that will that will go a long ways to facilitating the distributed nature of the project, uh, just by virtue of the fact that people are starting to, uh, you know, to to to, to learn, you know, who, who we all respectively are, what their skills and uh, what their skills are, and so forth, and 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 people can sort of start staking out. Aspects of of this uh, of this project going forward. So, um, you know, ideally, you would we would have a particular proposal that we could start working on. Now, you know, you, you could say, you know, we, we could maybe even call this an experiment um, of going down an initial sprint of you know working on the the joint DH and IBM proposal. And if if that doesn't seem to be working, we can just sort of decide, well, okay, that was an interesting experiment. We learned something, and maybe we need to try another experiment. But I, I, you know, personally as chair, I'd like to get us all moving as opposed to spending all our time on conference calls. So, some thoughts on that. I mean, I just maybe we just go around the the horn and and get perspective from each of the members of the TSC to start anyway. Uh, hi, um, Chris. This is Parda from ATCC. So, I think I agree with your idea that you know, I don't see any reason why these two cannot go in parallel. While you know, while some people are working on the white paper and uh, another team is working to bring together this, you know, and work on this proposal that you guys uh, uh, did today. That's my thoughts. Thank you. Thoughts from others? Yeah, this is Mick. Um, uh, I'm generally in favor of moving ahead very quickly on this. Um, I, I think there are there are two concerns. Um, one is uh, uh, I'd like to see what step two is that will encourage us to uh, ensure the flexibility and modularity of the architecture mm -hmm. that we come up with, so that it's not a single solution. Um, right. And and uh, you know my other concern obviously is the one that I talked about in the mailing list, which is you know, moving fast is, is both a good and a bad thing. It's good because it forces us to consider concrete problems. Um, it also can lead to, um, you know, ossification of architectures too early. Um, so uh, I, I guess my recommendation would be let's move ahead, but let's make sure we have a clear idea what step two is um, uh, that would um, apply an appropriate pressure to ensure the flexibility of the architecture. I guess I guess I guess I'd echo that. The the thought going through my head is the this this document 
that ultimately, I guess, captures the, the, the vision and mission, I suppose, and then and ultimately the project definition is, is, is probably key for me. Um, I'm probably relatively less interested in, in, in the code until, until that's, that's done, although obviously I'll be paying attention. Um, and the, I guess the, 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 the consequence of that is, I guess we all have to be ready for the possibility that there's a, a quite significant, significant change in the direction of the code when that emerges. Um, and the, the only way that would, I guess, work well is if the document itself is, is grounded in um, in quote real use cases. So we need to make sure there's something in place that doesn't turn it into a shopping list or a, you know, an engineering wish list. But you know, the, the decision implicit in that document are there because you know, there's there's either potential users speaking or there's there's, there's evidence from deployed systems. Just so we keep ourselves honest. Uh, this is uh, Stan uh, from CME. I want to second mix uh, comments that if we're going to and it makes perfect sense to start uh, quickly, but if we're going to start before we have this, this white paper in place, it, we should really focus on making sure that the architecture is modular enough to allow for changing direction. All right, thank you. Others? This is uh, David Vol, yeah, and um, I, mean, I think that last point is, is very good as well. Um, uh, you know, we should move quickly um, and then just check and make sure everyone is comfortable with the flexibility of the architecture. Um, and if we need to make some changes, then, you know, that will come out. Um, but, uh, you know, the way you describe that is, you know, we can look at it as an experiment and not be afraid to, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with failing as long as you fail quickly. So, you know, uh, it's better yeah, to get going. <laughs> And yeah, and, and we don't want to get stuck in analysis paralysis as well, right? Because we could go back and forth forever. So, you know, getting out there, getting something, really testing it, failing quickly, and then moving on. Uh, I think that's the direction uh, we would support. Thanks, David. Others? Pretty sure I haven't heard from all 11. <laughs> yeah, this is again uh, Sean from Digital Asset. I, I want to second that uh, point once again. Uh, our, our main concern was around uh, the social aspect of making sure that this uh, that this foundation gets to know each other face to face very quickly, um, and and really want to balance the two things of how do we make sure that we're not uh, sil siloed into a specific solution. Uh, and allow allow uh, comments uh, again, like I, I saw the great comments yesterday by, by uh, Intel. How do we put in how do you put in different uh, different consensus mechanisms after we gather requirements? Which uh, I know we're glad to give the requirements for our client base, but how how do we make it modular enough to allow uh, requirement gatherings for other use cases or, or adding uh, ripple transactors as a different chain code? Uh, but we want to get in. We we want to have this as as a stack that at least one instantiation gets into production. Um, or, or pilots in, in 2016, because uh, that'll keep us all very focused on, on clients' needs as well. And as one, once we have the user committees as well, I think we'll, we'll reap a lot of benefits from that, from, uh, from having a first instantiation. But by no means is the, the last instantiation. It really is just to get us face to face, get us collaborating by code and collaborating by wiki, uh, and, and, uh, and, and less by uh, calls and, uh, and design. Thanks, so. Others? Okay. So I guess I, I I think I think I'm hearing rough consensus. Is that is that fair? Is there anybody who would object to sort of moving forward with this fail fast experiment approach to uh, uh, where we would, you know, both be starting to work on a <clears throat> modular and extensive and extensible code base, um, and drive an experiment to see if we can't integrate the UTXO transaction model um, into the into the into the OBC, and par in parallel with that, to also be working on um, a white paper slash requirements document that outlines. Precisely where we think we want to go initially, 
and what we think we're going to be building, you know, identifies and articulates the use cases, and um, and we can we can sort of again, if we're, I, I would hope that we'd all be paying attention to both so that we're you know sort of steering the ship in the in the right direction. But you know, to David's point, I think uh, it's important that we not spend all our time in analysis paralysis and and uh, and and I and I do agree with Shaw that you know getting together and actually starting to work on code and collaboratively working on the you know the requirements I think will help bring the team together and actually get get this party started. So let me let me put it this way: Is there anybody who would object to us proceeding the way we've roughly been describing here? Um, just with the um, uh, with the emphasis that both of these are important and that the requirements is something that will set us up for the evolution of the project. Yes. I'm in favor. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. So, yeah. I, I, I'm just making sure that I understand what you're actually proposing, Chris. So, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we're, I think we're nearly there. And, and, and again, I, you know, um, I, I, I do want to emphasize that, you know, I think we all, you know, share a, a role and a responsibility in helping to move this forward. Uh, and 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 please do, you know, if you think that we're moving in the wrong direction, speak up and 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 please do say so, and then offer up, you know, some ideas about, you know, how we might either course correct or, you know. Start to think about, you know, maybe calling this this experiment something that we need to maybe, you know, stick a fork in. But, um, uh, you know, I think you know the the, the first step is always the <laughs> the scariest. And and uh, but, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm very hopeful. I mean, this I think you know we I think we've demonstrated thus far that, you know, we're all coming from different places, and yet by the same token. Um, I, I don't think we've gotten yet a situation where there's been any real any any real tension. So that's that's always a positive sign. All right, I think we have a plan. We have about ten minutes left. Um, I think there's a um, I think there's a a few things that um, uh, that that that. I think I'm sorry, I'm pulling my thoughts together here. I think there's a few things just from an, uh, an administrative perspective um, that I'd just like to to get out. Um, Todd and 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 Mike, um, you know, I set up uh, you know the the wiki, and and one of the things that I'd like to have is uh, the minutes posted, and I just like to also make sure that um, uh, I, I'm not making a, a false assumption that that Todd that he'll be continuing to take notes. Um, if, if that isn't the case, then I guess we'll have to assign a secretary or maybe a rotating scribe uh, role. But um, you've been doing a great job so thus far. I just wanted to make sure I understand, you know, what your role is going forward and whether or not, you know, in addition to Mike stepping back, you're also going to be stepping back and and if we should be looking for a scribe or a secretary. As someone from the LF, well, uh, Chris, so we'll always have you covered. Okay. Um, our ability okay. to document some of the technical detail of discussion, as you've probably noticed in some of the notes already, is, is a bit limited. But, um, you know, if we start getting into cryptographic hash discussions, it's going to be lightweight. <laughs> but we'll, we'll do our best. And we do them through Google Docs. So, um, you know, if anybody has any updates or uh, changes, uh, just let us know. Raise a comment in Google Docs. Okay. Or just change yourself. All right. I, I just want <laughs> it was like, I probably should have made that. <laughs> Ask that yeah. in the beginning, but thanks, thanks, Mike. <laughs> I appreciate yeah, no it. So, uh, yeah, if I could ask Todd, if you could just sort of link the the, the three, uh, I think it's three formal, you know, project minutes into the wiki, um, uh, I'd appreciate it. Sure thing, no problem. And um, I, I'm probably also going to be bringing some uh, additional people from the LF uh, into the project to help run things. Um, so you may see some uh, new names popping up uh, to help out on uh, sort of the leadership side and, and just organizational operational side as well. Um, so, thank you. 
Uh, one question, I, uh, Chris, we did, I did bring a, or raise a discussion last week about doing a face-to-face. -face, I know it came up earlier on this call, uh, the possibility, I think, uh, yeah. David potentially offered space. I know DTCC had offered space. Um, but did we want to spend any time today sort of planning out yes, what that would be? That was going to be the final piece was of the puzzle. Uh, you know, I think, you know, David uh, and, and, and JP Morgan and Chase kindly offered um, uh, to host this. Again, I guess the, you know, the when is obviously going to be important. Um, I'm trying to figure out when uh, we we might get this done. You know, there's a, I guess there's a possible uh, we could do something the week of the what's this where's March. And again, I think a, a week long exercise is is probably what we should be looking to do. Um, is there uh, in, in the Links Foundation, Mike? Is there any kind of policy about giving you know certain notice before having a face to face to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to get all the requisite approvals and so forth. Is there any policy like that? I know a lot of standards. We don't, we don't have a policy, but it, it's just a matter of, you know, what will it take to get a quorum? You know, some projects, mm -hmm. you know, like No Jazz right. Foundation, you can throw together a meeting in three days in San Francisco and get just about 80% of the community. Uh, for this group, right. uh, you know, if it's a couple of weeks out or something, I think that's reasonable. But, you know, if anybody objects to that, now's the time to raise it. So next week is the 29th. The week after that is the 6th. Then we have the 13th. Um, is the 6th um, within the realm of possibility? Could we? Is there anybody who could, you know, who couldn't do the 6th? And by anybody, I mean, again, it, it may be that you know those of us that are, um, you know, participating in the TSC may not necessarily be the ones. That, you know, maybe we're getting some of our engineers together um, and and camping out. So. Um, there's that, uh, you know, is, is the week of the sixth something, David, that you guys could host? Um, or should we be looking at maybe the 13th and that gives you an opportunity to figure out, do you have the space and for us, you know, collectively to figure out over the course of the next uh, few days. And again, I would hope that we could maybe do this by the middle of the week before the call next, uh, uh, next Thursday, um, to figure out how many people, you know, we think we might be sending. And, and maybe we should do that. Maybe we should do the 13th if possible, and then try quickly within the first couple of days of next week to figure out uh, and, and have people sort of say who they think would be attending, Mike or, or Todd, if we could maybe, um, you know, put out some sort of a survey or something just so that uh, David and team can, can just, you know, find the logistics suitable for, for that number of individuals and that we can all start, you know, planning travel and so forth. Um, for us, Deutsche Börse, the, this week doesn't work. The week after, would, we could, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, the week after. Yeah. yeah, but it would put it 21st, and then we would we might be available. I can't do. I'm sorry, a second. Okay. I'm not sure I understand. That. Sorry. Was that the week of the sixth not work? Oh, the week of six and thirteen don't work. The week after, our availability could could start again. Okay. Twenty <coughs> first is the Monday, I think. Okay, so so the week or the sixth or the thirteenth work. It's anything for that. <laughs> it's difficult. Okay. They do work or they don't work. I mean, I'm, yeah, I, I guess I'm confused. Now. Don't. He, yeah, he's saying the week of the sixth and thirteenth are good. Oh, okay. They don't for that. They're not good. Yeah. <laughs> not good. Okay. That, that's what I thought I heard first. It's okay. Um, that's unfortunate. All right. Deutsche Boys, you're, you're on a speakerphone. Maybe if uh, you could say a couple things first and then say that I, if we got that right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, for us, those two weeks, they don't work. The whole team is basically off the, the, in during those two weeks. Oh, the 6th and the 13th are not good. Yes. Yeah, they are not good. Those two weeks are not good. Okay, I heard you wrong. Okay. After that is good, though, so starting the week of the yeah. 20th. That looks better, yeah. But if everybody else can do, we just see what we can catch up then after afterwards. 
Is there is there anyone else for whom the week of the thirteenth wouldn't work? I, I you know I almost hate to you know I almost hate to sort of put it off yet another week. But if, Chris, perhaps we can perhaps we can open a, uh, just a doodle for this, and each company will put in because uh, uh, it'll be hard to find something that works for everyone. So that that'll be then we'll see who can who can do what time. Uh, we'll probably be flying in some people, so we need a, a few days to well we need a few hours to, to take a look. Yeah, we can we can uh, set yeah, up a we can set up a doodle poll and then just it's and just try to see who. Can. All right, so let's do that. Let's have a doodle poll for the. Um, let's just put the three weeks: six, thirteen, and twenty, and let's see who. Um, um, who, who who we can get, and um, and we'll go with wherever we have the, the largest form, if you will. Um, okay, I think that's good. And then let's do let's actually try to close that out. Chris, just week. a so just say, sorry to interrupt. Just a quick question: Is this face to face only open for TSC members, or is this for the broader no, community? No, no, it, it, it's it's open to anyone. It's open to anyone. The intention is just to get the party. Rolling, and actually have engineers sit down and start, you know, pulling things together. I mean, I think there's work to be done on the code base itself. I think there's work to be done setting up continuous integration delivery pipelines with, you know, Travis and whatever. Um, and, and then there's work to be done on on the, the use cases and the, you know, the white paper. Um, so I think that it's it's really it's anyone is is, is welcome to attend. It's just I think we have to figure out, you know. Who's who's going to come, and probably need to have a registration so that you know, and 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 cut it off at some point because uh, we can't just have an unlimited um, thing. So so I just want to move on this quickly. So maybe if we could have a, a doodle poll that we all get back by uh, Tuesday of next week, and then we can start planning the logistics and uh, opening up a, a registration. Um, thank you. I think we're at end of job, so I, I want to thank everyone. Uh, thank everyone again for, for for your support. I hope um, I uh, I hope that uh, we can we can all collectively be successful at this. Uh, so and uh, so I think Todd or Mike is going to send out the, the the doodle poll and and um, we'll we'll get moving. But thanks thanks everyone. Okay, yeah, thanks, Chris. Yep, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.